friends, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation. I'm Jeff, and today on episode 138, we're taking a look at every indie game hitting the Nintendo Switch through the week ending February 27th. You can find Nindy Nation on Twitter, come hang out with us on Discord, or check out the week's new releases with us right here on YouTube every Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern during our Nindies at Night stream. Now before we dive into all of the new games on today's episode, let's first touch on those that slipped between the cracks last week. These are the five neglected Nindies that released since episode 137. After a bunch of teasing and flying right by a projected 2021 launch, on Valentine's Day last week, the team at WayForward delighted fans of beat-em-ups by releasing River City Girls Zero for $14.99. Now, this is not a new game per se, rather it's one of the earliest games in the Kunio-kun series of brawlers that started all the way back on the NES. You may know the series by its River City name, and for the most part, this 1994 Super Nintendo game that never left Japan is in line with what you should expect from a 16-bit brawler. With a fresh translation, new animated cutscenes, and a reworked story, this game is now a bona fide prequel to the fantastic River City Girls, and a great game to check out while we wait for the sequel. And then we've got the seven-year-old port of an Android game called Redden 100 Denari for $7.99. It comes by way of Trues, who has provided no trailer and a completely worthless description, but from what I can tell is a game that seems pretty cool. Told through a bunch of narratives centered around war and conflict, you play as a throwing knife, a bullet, or any other number of projectiles, with gameplay that has you steering said projectile through the sky to hit its target. With its age and origin, $8 seems like a bit too much, but this game is definitely going on my wish list. If you're one of the 80 million who have a 3DS and may be looking for games to buy before the eShop closes next year, make sure to check out Puzzles and Dragons, because it's an excellent puzzle game that blends all kinds of gameplay into basically an RPG. I say check that one out though, because while I'm excited for the release of Puzzle and Dragons Nintendo Switch Edition, I have some hesitations. It's only $4.37, which is reasonable and a pretty good price, but it appears to have microtransactions and is published by Gong Ho Online, who's notorious for turning good games into crappy pay-to-win or gotcha cash grabs. Let's see what others have to say about the monetization first and put this one on the back burner just in case we get good news. And then Random Spin Games released Space Intervention for 99 cents because if they called it Space Invaders, they would get sued. And last up for this segment is... From Gamuzumi. As true as their quest to make everything video game a borderline underage porno, their $2 release this week is called Inside Her. But then they put bedroom in parentheses, I guess to make it more or less pervy? I'm not sure. It's a puzzle game where you pick up girls in underwear and your reward is unlocking cutscenes with underage anime monster girls. Because, you know, if Demon Spawn takes the form of young, scantily clad girls, it's even more exciting to imagine them fucking you in the Peach with a Mario. the size of Texas. Yeah. Are you interested in Redden or River City Girls? Have you played Puzzles and Dragons before? Let me know down in the comments, and let's jump right in to the 12 new releases hitting the Nintendo Switch through Sunday, February 27th. The week kicks off on Wednesday the 23rd when East Asia Soft and Marcos Game Dev want to know if you remember Splosion Man, one of the early mainstream indie success stories of the Xbox Live Arcade era. Anyone? Explosive Candy World is a $5 platformer where the main gimmick for traversal and puzzles is blowing yourself up. You find the place you need to reach, aim your explosion, and boom, you're on your way to the next level. I think we might check this one out on Nindies at Night, so come hang out on Thursday if you want to see more. Oh, now here's an interesting one. 
Crowdfunded way back in 2013, the brand new aptly named Midgar Studio set off on a five-year journey to build their, quote, Western JRPG. In late 2018, Edge of Eternity hit early access, where it began full-time development as a love letter to RPGs that kinda play like an MMO. You know, games like the Zeno series, Final Fantasy X, XI, twelve. Well, it hit early access last summer and arrived on the PC with good, not great reviews, and it makes its way to the Switch this week for $26.99, and there's a demo available right now. Not a bad price for a decent 50-hour indie JRPG. Reviews from the RPG-centric outlets were much kinder to Edge of Eternity versus those that reviewed all types of games, so when it finds its audience on the Switch, I'll be very interested to see how the reviews pan out. Massive Galaxy Studios knows just what the eShop needs because they're here to fill that trifecta-shaped hole in your heart with For the Warp for the 20 bucks. This is a roguelike deck builder where you traverse a grid while searching for resources or accomplishing other various objectives with the limited resources you have. When you get into a fight, it plays out like any other card battler game, and then you're on to the next. But get this, For the Warp is set in space. Now are you impressed? <laughs> the game doesn't look to reinvent the wheel in any fashion, but the gameplay does look solid, and the reviews from its PC release last year were overall positive. If you're in the mood for some sci-fi deck building, you've got plenty of it waiting for you in For the Warp with all of its procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! On Thursday, Nindy newcomer Arita Games makes a splash with their nostalgic console brawler, An American Werewolf in L.A. for $4.99. This tongue-in-cheek take on 80s pop horror looks short, super simple, and sweet. You know what it reminds me of? Those B-tier licensed brawlers on Super Nintendo that I'd rent from Blockbuster then play all weekend as a kid? The Tick, Power Rangers, the movie. <laughs> yeah, I see you Power Rangers fans. It's morphin' time. Go, go, Power Rangers! Spider-Man and Venom, those games. And yes, it's meant to be a spiritual sequel to the 1981 hit movie An American Werewolf in London, too. To their credit, the description's well-written, they've got good, helpful screenshots, and looking through Let's Plays from its PC release last year, it should have a runtime typical of arcade brawlers from that era clocking in at around 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah, I think I'm going to pick this one up. You want to see it in Indies at Night? Let me know. Is Tom Games really drives me crazy, you know? They come out of nowhere, and they start dropping games every couple weeks, and while they're about to release their 10th janky mobile game port, they did bring over Red Siren, and I adore Red Siren. This week, they release a game that I turn my nose up and scoff at, but then keep peeking back as I look away. I mean, even the name sounds stupid. You know why? because it's the exact same thing as my answers to two questions I was asked in a survey after calling to complain about my internet bill. Where do you want the speed test arrows to go, and what is your name at nighttime? To the top! Mammoth! Has you climbing up towers in a slick, rotating 2.5D style that reminds me of pandemonium. You gotta find ladders and various other ways to climb up while dealing with enemies and obstacles, and it looks like it could be based on a DreamWorks movie, so it's family-friendly. It's 10 bucks, which I think is too much, but I could see myself picking it up on a Black Friday deal. <laughs> the first thought I had when I looked at Who is Zombie was, What the fuck is this? But then I realized that it appears to be similar to Papers, Please, the game where you play as a TSA agent approving or denying people entry into the country. In this game, you do the same, but in a zombie apocalypse. So you interview and research people who want to come into the safe house, you know, to make sure they're not a zombie. The problem here is that it's from CFK, who I'm not the biggest fan of. And it's a bit hard for me to tell if this is a different take on the ideas from Papers, Please, or if it's just a cheap knockoff. It's nine bucks on sale at launch for eight, so if you're interested, do a little more research first. I bet this would be a fun game to stream, though. And then we've got- Holy f***ing sh**! Are you serious right now? The f***ing thumbnail for Antarctica 88 just about made me sh** my pants! Thanks a lot, Epic Zer. Aside from that godforsaken thumbnail, 
For six bucks, this doesn't look like a bad first-person shooter. Well, I mean, it does look like a bad budget first-person shooter, but it seems to be inspired by the standouts on the N64 and GameCube, and I think that's kind of the point. It's like government research in Antarctica, oopsie, we summon demon spawn, go run around and shoot things that look like Resident Evil 2 bosses. Oh, and the description is great. In this horrible action, you will find yourself in the ice of Antarctica, where you immerse into a terrible sci-fi story full of monsters, weapons, and adventures. Our survival action will scare you, so prepare to scream and solve puzzles! Indie Nova tops off Thursday's drop by proclaiming, The non-romantic and anticlimactic odyssey of NPCs has started. <laughs> I swear, this game looks so dumb, but also just the best idea. An NPC's Odyssey is, by design, a bland, generic JRPG about the uninteresting, non-playable characters who solely exist to support the typical JRPG protagonist's storyline. No idea if this is going to be any good, I mean, it's kind of supposed to be bland, but it looks funny and is another $5 game that I just might take a chance on. We've got a few more Nindies coming this Friday, but before that, make a note to steer clear of these Nindy no-nos. Eclipse Games wants to know if two wrongs make a right with number one Anagram's Sudoku's Bundle for $5.99. But Silesia Games knows exactly what their games are worth, because they bundled 15 of them together for $3 and 15 and one solitaire. And while Triva only sounds like the name of a synthetic sugar substitute, I have a feeling their latest title, Amazing Machines, will give you diarrhea all the same. PixArts slash Benoit Veras publish Flip the Buddy and continue to be the strongest case for an eShop refund button. And after their smash hit, Bridge 3, the Maniacs at Aerosoft slapped a $40 price tag on what looks like a D-tier PS1 racing game being played on an emulator with all of the smoothing options maxed out. Psh, they think they can make me look bad, having to read Autobahn Police Simulator 2, but the thing is, I'll never look as bad as the people asking $40 for Autobahn Police Simulator 2. On Friday, if you're picking anything up, my guess is that it'll probably be One Gun Guy by Ritual Games and Checkmate Publishing. This is the same team responsible for Gun Crazy, and also happens to look like a riff on something between Mega Man X and Contra. I had a lot of fun with their past games, so I'm looking forward to this one. For $4.99, this looks like a great way to scratch that jump and shoot itch. Or maybe I'll scratch that jump and shoot itch with Ammo Pigs Cocked and Loaded by Chili Dog Interactive. It's also a running gunner with chonky pixels, but this one leans a bit more into its characters and story, providing some more platforming and exploration versus the constant action of One Gun Guy. Hmm, they're both so similar. Which one do you think looks better? Both games are five bucks, so I guess it just comes down to do you want to press start and blow stuff up, or do you want some context and the ability to explore? The choice is yours. One game that I won't even consider is the ultra-generic Zelda-like Eternum Quest releasing for $6.99. This comes by way of Isla Choclear, who we last saw trying to profit from COVID lockdowns. Probably should have put this one in the no-nos, because now that I've got it in front of me, I can't think of anything good or redeeming to say about it. And then East Asia Soft rounds out the week with a cartoony take on Tower Defense with Plunderer's Adventures for $4.99. If you've played Plants vs. Zombies, this seems to be extremely similar, which could be fun. For some reason, though, it's got an M rating. Let's see why. Oh, it's got nudity. Wait, this is an East Asia Soft booby game? Really? It looks like a kid's game. Huh. I guess I won't be protecting my booty after all. Darn it. It's another short week, but I'm digging the various $5 titles. Anything for you? Let me know down in the comments. Beyond what we covered last week, there isn't too much new by way of deals this week. Which makes sense, because I can just feel an indie world right around the corner. But we've still got a few, so let's go check out the six Nindy deals at their lowest prices ever, on sale through at least... February 28th.
We have covered it recently, but this is the first time Tunche has been on sale since our Best of 2021 video. Needless to say, I really like this multiplayer beat-em-up, and I love the way it builds the trifecta formula into its hand-drawn take on the Amazon. It's currently 30% off for $13.99 and comes fully loaded with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! <laughs> And a game that just missed our top 10, likely would have been number 11, is another multiplayer brawler, but this one takes a weapons-driven approach that is much more complex and very, very fun. Shing is currently all the way down to $3.99, an 80% discount, and at that price is practically a must-buy. There's a great story that's well told through excellent voice acting. The whole game is kinda tongue-in-cheek and silly in its own way. It's really fun to play on your own or with friends. And frankly, it's one of the best brawlers on the Switch. But if you just want something simple and fun that also happens to have a great soundtrack, Paco Caravan is a great way to pass a few minutes at a time. It's basically a modern take on Snake. You drive around and build the longest caravan possible without running into anything or, of course, yourself. It's 70% off for $239, which feels just right, so if this looks like fun, go get it. Another cheap game with a lot to offer is the side-scrolling action-adventure Super Epic The Entertainment War, which is 88% off for $2.15. At this price, it's almost irresponsible not to pick it up. It's an exploration platformer with lots of simple combat and tells a downright hilarious story all about poking fun at the video game industry, and it's sure to give you at least a couple good laughs. There's really nothing that this game doesn't do right. For two bucks, you should go check it out. Last summer, we saw the release of Unbound Worlds Apart, and I think it got lost in the mix of a bunch of games releasing around the same time. Visually, it looks a lot like Ori and the Blind Forest, but it's a bit smaller in scale and less open-ended. It's a fun game that includes all types of 2D combat and puzzle solving, where you swap between characters as the situation dictates. There's a demo available, so go check that out first, and if it's what you're looking for, you can grab the full game while it's 40% off for $11.99. And last up this week is Knights and Guns, a hidden gem of sorts that's an arcade shooter very similar to the Bug Butcher. You run side to side while shooting up at enemies, but rather than Bug Butcher's sci-fi aesthetic, Knights and Guns uses a medieval setting with visuals similar to something like Cuphead and it's beautiful. This is a cheap, fun game that features lots of progression elements that'll keep you coming back, and it includes two-player co-op throughout. If you've got $3.74 burning a hole in your digital pocket, consider checking out Knights and Guns while it's 75% off. Yeah, with the deals being so, so slim and the smallest release list since Christmas week, we've got to have an indie world right around the corner. Either way, we still had some good stuff this week, so let me know what stood out to you, and if we missed any eShop deals, drop your picks down in the comments. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, or better yet, come hang out with fellow citizens over on Discord. Links to both are down in the description. Nindies at Night has been a lot of fun lately, so thanks to everyone for stopping by. I hope to have some more games to give out this week, but you won't be able to win unless you stop by this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube. What do you want to see this week? Thanks so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing Nindy Nation with others. Until next week, citizens, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 138. And remember, no matter what type of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons singing.